Hey guys, my name is Joe, and today we're going to be talking about glutamine synthetase regulation. This is that crazy bifunctional enzyme in your notes that has the colors and it looks like it's really complicated, but just like the bifunctional enzyme from the last unit, we're going to see that this one is really not that bad once you figure out what's going on. So before we talk about regulating glutamine synthetase, let's see what glutamine synthetase actually does. Having a good broad understanding of the enzyme is really going to help us um, make sense of the regulation. So when we make ammonia from the glutamate dehydrogenase reactions and the other ways that we've learned about in this unit, ammonia looks like this. It has that lone pair. And that lone pair makes it really, really dangerous because it's going to pick up any acidic proton anywhere, including from water. So if ammonia were to just flow out into um, your bloodstream or even just off of an enzyme where there's cytosol, anywhere where there's water, it would take the hydrogens from the water um, and just mess with the pH balance in your blood. One of the bigger issues with ammonia is that if you guys remember the electron transport chain works by making a hydrogen ion gradient and then those hydrogen ions come in through um, the ATP synthase which spins and makes ATP right but the point is you have a hydrogen ion gradient if ammonia got into that hydrogen ion gradient it would destroy it because it would just eat up all the hydrogens and make ammonium so for those two reasons we really can't have ammonia flowing around in our bloodstream. But we do need to transfer nitrogen between organs and between different cells. And so the way we do it without causing all of these bad side effects of having ammonia floating around is through glutamine, which is one of the amino acids whose structure you guys should remember. So this enzyme works, a lot, works just like this, actually. You start out, I'll face it this way, This is glutamate. You can tell that it's glutamate. This is a review of test one because it has this O minus right there that makes it glutamate. This glutamate combines with ammonia and ATP and the enzyme is glutamate uh, glutamine synthetase, the one we're talking about today. So glutamine synthetase takes glutamate, ammonia, and ATP and makes it into... I should have a minus sign. And makes it into glutamine. So the important part here is that this O- minus on the bottom um, carboxylic acid is now an NH2. And so this is glutamine, and we can use it to transport nitrogen throughout our whole body because it doesn't have the same issue where it um, just steals hydrogens. Uh, it's because it's stabilized by this carboxyl group, but you don't need to worry about why, just know that glutamine makes a really good shuttle between the organs of ammonia because it doesn't destroy hydrogen ion gradients. So as you can imagine, this is a pretty important reaction. So we have to regulate it. And regulation is really important in this class because, well, I mean, it's important to you being alive and it's also important because they test it a lot. So let's figure out how we regulate this enzyme. You guys should keep this reaction out in front of you to reference while we're uh, talking about the regulation. I just don't have room up here. So this is the crazy looking bifunctional enzyme that's really not so crazy, I promise. All right, so let's figure out how this enzyme's regulation actually works. So we have two forms of glutamine synthetase. We have regular old active glutamine synthetase which is active on its own without anything attached to it. 
And then you have glutamine synthetase with an AMP attached to it. And this AMP makes the whole enzyme inactive. I'm just going to write off. This turns the enzyme off. And so, of course, we have to convert between these two forms because at some points we're going to want it to be on and at some points we're going to want it to be off. Your notes have this in two separate colors, but I don't really like the way they do it. So I'm going to do it a little bit differently, and hopefully it makes a little more sense. So you've got this uh, glutamate synthase that is off, and you want it to be on, and you have the on one, and you want it to be off. And the enzyme that, tr that switches between the on and off forms is called adenylyl transferase. I'll write that down right here. It's adenylyl transferase. And both different, uh, like both turning it on and turning it off, use adenylyl transferase. The difference is what's attached to the adenylyl transferase. So both sides. On both sides, adenylyl transferase has a regulatory protein on it called P2. So both sides, up until now, they're, they're the same. They're the enzyme adenylyl transferase with a P2 molecule on it. I'm going to erase this name just because it gets it's making some clutter. So now we have adenylyl transferase with a P2 on it. The difference is that when it has a UMP attached to it. UMP is just like AMP, but with a uracil instead of an adenine. So we've got a um, adenylyl transferase with the regulatory molecule on both sides, but when it has the UMP attached to the regulatory molecule, it's going to turn glutamine, uh, glutamine synthetase on. All right, so when you have adenylyl transferase without the UMP, notice it still has the P2, but it doesn't have the UMP, which is the critical part. So no UMP means that the enzyme is turning glutamine synthetase off. All right, so now the key question becomes, how do we attach the UMP to adenylyl transferase P2 and how do we take it off? Because that's really what's going to regulate which half of this reaction is on and which half is off. So I'm going to draw that up here. So on this side, we've got regular P2 with no UMP, which would deactivate glutamine synthetase. On this side, we have P2 with the UMP, and that would turn glutamine synthetase on. So now we have to get back and forth between these two forms, right? So there's going to be some sort of equilibrium that exists here. Sometimes you're going to have more of this if you want the pathway to be on, and sometimes you're going to have more of this if you want the pathway to be off. So how do we switch between them? Well. Going, going in the forward direction, let's go from, let's say we want to turn this pathway on. We want to turn glutamine synthetase on. We're going to need to attach a UMP to this molecule. That process of attaching a UMP is called uridinylation. Ur uridinylation is just a kind of awkward sounding word, really, but it just <laughs> refers to the fact that you're ta taking a UMP and attaching it to the P2. So the way we do that is we start with a UTP, which once again is similar to ATP, very similar to ATP, but with a U instead of an A. Um, and we attach the UMP here. Uh, we take the UTP and we make it into UMP and then we attach the UMP 
to the P2 regulatory molecule. All right, and now going in the backwards direction, Let's say now we have UMP, but we want to turn this pathway off. We want to turn glutamine synthetase off. We're going to need to take the UMP off of the P2 molecule so that we can activate this half. All right, so the way we do it is we've already got uh, UMP on, and so we just hydrolyze it. So we take water. We take water and we just put it, if, do you guys remember hydrolysis reactions from Orgo? It's when you break two things apart and add water across the bond where they used to be. So that's what we do here. Water comes in and it just kicks off the UMP. So the water comes in, the UMP leaves. Notice that the two halves are different, right? This half doesn't release water and this half does not release UTP so that's one of the kind of tricky parts about this is noticing that the forward and backwards reactions are not the same all right so what makes this a tiny bit more complicated is because this pathway even though it's a regulatory pathway on its own for these two enzymes or this one enzyme really it's also regulated so let's talk about that for a minute, and I know that kind of freaks you guys out, but let's talk about it for a minute, and I think it'll become clear. So if we're going from P2 to P2 UMP, that means that we are turning glutamine synthetase on, right? That means we're going to be making more glutamine. So we've got some negative feedback here. So if I'm going to draw like a line so we don't get my uh, notes don't overlap but if we've got a lot of glutamine glutamine is going to inhibit this process because this process turns glutamine synthetase on which would make more glutamine and if we've already got a lot of glutamine well we don't need to be making any more so we've got negative feedback where glutamine inhibits uridinylation now Alpha ketoglutarate and ATP both activate it. For this pathway, alpha ketoglutarate and glutamine do the opposite things, right? So since glutamine activates uridin, I'm sorry, since glutamine deactivates uridinylation, since it stops it from happening, alpha ketoglutarate activates it. We can draw these the way you guys are used to seeing them, actually, which is with X's and check marks. Keep things consistent. So glutamine invokes negative feedback here and stops the pathway from happening. Alpha ketoglutarate and ATP promote uridinylation, so indirectly they promote glutamine synthetase being active. So on the opposite side, what is affecting this up here? Well, it's the exact opposite of the bottom side, as you could guess. Glutamine activates this process because if you have a lot of glutamine, same logic as last time, you're not going to want to make any more. So you're going to want um, to you're going to want to turn off glutamine synthetase, and you turn off glutamine synthetase by removing the UMP. So glutamine synthetase promotes de uh, deuridinylation. We can write that in here. Uh, he won't, I doubt he'll test you on the words, but it's deuridinylation. That doesn't quite fit, but it's close. Deuridinylation. So, what did we say about glutamine and alpha ketoglutarate? Is that they're opposites. So, since glutamine activates 
the backwards reaction. Alpha ketoglutarate deactivates it. It stops it from happening. Uh, ATP and ATP activated uridinylation. There's no opposite of it up here. Uh, AMP doesn't have a significant role in turning this enzyme off. Um, but just remember that glutamine and alpha ketoglutarate work as opposites. That's really all there is to this enzyme. I know that's kind of a lot. The fact that you've got regulation to regulate regulators, uh, it sounds kind of crazy, but when you break it down, it's really not too bad. Hopefully that made it clearer. Uh, if you guys still have more questions, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll do my best to get to them before your test. Good luck. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.